The main thing is that there are fewer people in the developed world than there are in the developing world, so there's a sheer imbalance of numbers. Um, I think the other concern that's coming along is the sense that although the developed world consumption levels are very, very high and unacceptably high, um, the main anticipated growth in consumption is going to come from the developed world, partly because of the growth in numbers and partly because of the growth in the capital intakes. So we have, we have two questions. One is reducing the global warming, secondly, creating employment for the people who work. So maybe hybrid is you create small, medium-term, you know, medium-sized farms, make sure that you know farmers who are having inferior animals, they look to the best practices adopted there, and slowly, slowly, gradually. Yeah. But like in the States now, so many household, I mean, organic family farms, you know, there's sort of, they have these even kind of cooperative things where people buy, yeah. you know, part of the thing. There's a farmer who runs the farm and then you just pay shares and you get some of the food and, yeah, it's you know, you know and people now willing to pay for, to keep that, that kind of food system, you know. Yeah. At the end, the modified organism or the modified cow, so will, will it withstand other diseases that uh, would equally kill livestock? It's, it, it's entirely feasible that the same mechanism may provide immunity to other pathogens. What other diseases could this same gene control? Gene control? And so it could be a, a, a multiple beneficial aspect of a single gene. When we're talking about climate change, when it comes to poor countries, it's not about mitigation, it's not about doing anything about your own carbon footprint, because it's tiny anyway. It's not about trying to, to, to stop greenhouse gases, it's not about, it's about adapting. It's about how can you survive better when these changes come? What can you do to ensure that you will continue to be able to, to feed yourself and your families? So climate change, I would say climate change mitigation matters not at all to the poor, but climate change adaptation matters, matters a lot. I love that. See that we need to generate information that will help people to make decisions on the goods and bad. I think that's the key thing. Many of our target stakeholders, the poor, are often not well represented in those groups. So another job for us is to help them make sure their voice is heard. This is part of the dichotomy that we have uh, in, in terms of land use. Water, 31% of water used for agriculture is really about livestock, and this is really for producing feed. And if we look at, if we take into account the projected demand for livestock products, this is likely to double total agricultural water use by 2050. So imagine, not only we always think that where's the water going to come for growing the crops, but if the livestock revolution fully materializes, then we're also going to have a huge competing demand for water in the future for livestock. In India, by the year 2022, we have to produce 80% more milk. If you think livestock is bad, where are we going to get milk from? The meat production is going to uh, be, we have to cope with the de growing demand. It's going to be four times more in Southeast Asia. <laughs> if we want to stop livestock, where are we going to get our protein from? We believe that if you think livestock is not uh, good, then there is no scope for people, poor people to live on this earth. Livestock are good and bad for your health. But the bads, I'm afraid, are bigger and more certain than the goods. The biggest bad is probably zoonosis, diseases transmissible between animals and man. In fact, most human diseases, around about 60%, are zoonotic. However, the good news is that most burden of disease, most sickness and death, is not zoonotic. Still, it's pretty substantial. The best evidence we have, which is not very good, is that in poor countries, one in 10 people will die of a zoonotic infection. Look around you, one in 10 people is a lot. One of the biggest impacts of Hillary's mission is to answer the questions that people aren't even asking yet, so that when the problems do manifest themselves, you have the answer and can come in to save the day. Looking ahead of the curve, 
acting in a proactive manner is often undercut by responding to the show me the money approach of the moment. And so that is a challenge, whether that's in a university setting or in the CG network, but it's something that we should always keep an eye on in one of the real driving forces for why the CG centers were um, created was to look ahead of the curve and be trying to address the issues of the next generation. Um, we have a prospect of two or three more billion people in the world in the next 40 or 50 years. And we have a demand for animal products, meat, milk, eggs, that is outstripping the world's capacity to, to supply it. The global agriculture research community has both an opportunity, which is greater than it has been in two decades, and a challenge, which is greater than it's been in man, man's history. The challenge of providing a food supply for 9.2 billion people in the year 2040-2050. And animal, animal meat consumption, product consumption, is going to be a really important part of this global food security picture. And that means that productivity of livestock, chickens, cattle, sheep, goats, needs to increase. They're learning to use microphones. <laughs> but one of the learnings, I think, which we took from this exercise... <laughs> Paparazzi should go away. <laughs> Paparazzi! <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you see. This is the white elephant. So where the white Jemima elephant? Jemima you're that bird, absolutely. Coming down the white the elephant. Oh, Mary, can you repeat what you said before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a fish in the midst of a thunderstorm. <laughs> Complete with lightning, thunder, crackle. It's the loudest you've ever heard, Gabriel, they don't in your life. I, 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 that was a good comment. I really, they, they don't I really shouted. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> you're a dolphin. I'm a dolphin. Oh my god, on the rangelands, you're a dolphin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody so, made a mistake. I'm, 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 I'm going to link up with world fisheries. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>